Good afternoon everyone, it's Kay here with part four from Handy Hippo, the ABC of paper crafting. Today we're going to be talking about the tools that I'm not saying you absolutely need, but they are tools that are helpful um, to your crafting in general, whether it be card making, altering, whatever you care to name as your best friend in the crafting world, the things that I have on my table could benefit anything that you were planning to make. Um, Handy Hippo welcomes you, I welcome you to this fourth episode. I would like first of all to talk in very general terms about things that I personally use on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm crafting because I think anything else, once you've got your basic kit sorted out and things that you know that you use very regularly, then when it comes to buying other bits and pieces for your crafting that has to be on a requirement basis, I think. There are so many things out there that you can spend on and bring home and use once and then put away and probably never, ever, ever in a month of Sundays use again. So I would like to talk to you first of all about, as I say, things that I use personally and I think I'm a very ordinary crafter. I don't have um, all the most expensive equipment or anything like that. I've learnt over my years of crafting that there are things that you can use that you will be looking for on a regular basis, as I say, and other things that you put away and they're non-essential. So what I would say are essential craft making items are things like PVA glue or a form of glue, I'll put that over here, foam tape or the little mounting foam pads, some double sided tape, varying thicknesses as we talked about last week, they're, they're essential. Scissors. Now, like everyone, I have scissors for all sorts of different things. These would be for paper. These little things I would use for decoupage or fine fussy cutting. I find them absolutely invaluable. There are no screws or anything of that nature. It's almost like a pair of tweezers. The points are very, very fine and the scissors are very sharp and I have several pairs of those. There's a very fine end one, which I'm hoping you could pick up there. If I show them on the blue um, scissor handle, they are for very, very intricate work. I have another little sharp pair of scissors. Again, very fine pointed and they are extraordinarily sharp. I then have a selection of tweezers, angled, just to help me with picking up little diamante gems and that kind of thing that I might want to apply to a project without getting fingerprints and so on in the way. And then I've got inverted pliers because sometimes you know your hands aren't very good and you might want to squeeze something to open and let it spring back itself if you don't have the strength and momentum to keep them together. Those are essentials I would say. A little brush, whether it's a makeup brush or whatever, these are ideal just for dusting off your work as you go along if you get some dust on it or perhaps glitter lands where you don't want it to be. This is very soft, it's not going to damage or mark anything. An ideal little item. A pokey tool. Now these come in sets of tool. They are absolutely invaluable for making holes if you haven't got punches or just lifting up the corners of your double-sided tape. 
I also have a selection of um, embossing tools. This is one that Handy Hippo keeps here and it's a soft grip so it's ideal for ladies that have problems with gripping things over a period of time. This is a pack of three so in effect it is excellent value and um, they are various sizes. You have a small, a medium and a large so they would actually cross over if you were doing pergamano work which is the fine vellum work then something like that would be beneficial in that case they're great for embossing they're great for using on scoreboards if you can't find the designated um, bone tool handy so it's nice to have something like that to fall back on i also have craft knives these are disposable but Handy Hippo keep a range of craft knives, not too expensive, and these are great if you have your cutting mat just to use with a, a ruler, and it would need to be a metal edged ruler at the very least, or a metal ruler. Tim Holtz has um, a metal ruler for sale on Handy Hippo. It's called a designer ruler, um, but as long as it's metal, this avoids you slipping and sliding, cutting through a plastic ruler and possibly giving yourself some physical damage en route. So these, again, I would say are essentials. I also have a couple of um, water fill pens, pe paint brushes, which again are hand on Handy Hippo and these are my own personal stock. You fill them with water, they come in three sizes, they're in a pack of three, small, medium and large. You basically fill this part with water, you can e either use it for water crayons, you can use it for blending, you can use it with the Tim Holtz Distress dyes, any of the spritzes and sprays. If you apply the water to it, then you will find that you can blend the colour goes further and last longer. So these are things, you know, that I feel need to be collected before you get all the big fancy named stuff and you get into that place where you are buying for the sake of buying, which crafters tend to do. They have a brainstorming moment when somebody shows something new, they go along, they buy it, it's either a one-off use or they use it several times and then the next thing is on the market. And whilst it's lovely to have all of these things, I think if you want to take up crafting as a long-term hobby, there is time enough to collect. I mean, I've been crafting for, gosh, it must be about 12 years, maybe even longer. And over a period of time, I've done the bad buys, I've done the great buys, I've got things that I don't touch from one month to the next. So I feel I can be quite direct with you in saying, select what you want carefully and look for quality rather than the cheaper options because if you're in it for the long haul then you want things to last you don't want to be replacing them in short shift another handy gizmo which i've already talked about on a previous video video are little bottles like this that you can decant your liquid glues and things in this has got kalal in it and it just makes it much more manageable on the old hands. If you're a bit arthritic like me, it, it is easily applied. A beautifully fine nozzle so that you can actually put it in small areas without causing a problem. I always have a, a pen handy. I always have a pencil handy. My Secura glue gun, which I ought to really wear around my neck because when I'm in the zone I use that a lot and this also to be found on Handy Hippo is absolutely amazing it's full of glitter at the moment and you'll see why in a little while um, it's called a tidy a tray tidy they're not very expensive at all 
but the things if you if you're using glitter a lot and we're coming up to the glittery season with Christmas it's wonderful to have something like this to pour your glitter into or hold your project over while you pour glitter onto it because it's got this little black nozzle on the end which actually comes off it allows you then to decant back into the pot that your glitter has come from hence saving you a whole lot of worry. You do still end up looking like little Tinkerbell on top of the Christmas tree with glitter just about everywhere and your husband might go to work the next day with glitter in his hair because it flies all over the place but it's a small price to pay is what I tell people but this is amazing, it truly is and then when you're not using it for glitters and things you can actually put all the things that you're using for any given project in front of you so you know exactly where they are all the time. The other thing is my most recent purchase which is the uh, soft grit, grip um, multi-tool which distresses paper, takes the top layer off card. If you go along to Geordie Angel, excuse the helicopter, if you go along to Geordie Angel, another of the DT members, she has done a fabulous video, very concise, very precise about the bonuses of having this item in your kit and it really is a wonderful watch because she explains it all beautifully and it is quite an invaluable piece of merchandise so I'll put that now out of the way. Another pair of scissors that have come on the market are these. These are EK Success, another brilliant company currently uh, for sale on Handy Hippo. They are very, very sharp. They have extraordinarily sharp ends to them. They are easily used, fluid in their movement and best of all they have this safety cap so were you to have children in the house you don't have to worry unduly once that's on it doesn't come off very very easily little hands would have trouble getting at these they are a great buy and not terribly expensive we've talked about tapes and um, mounting pads and foam tape these are all things that, you know, you do use a lot. Then we come on to some more specialised craftware, also to be found on the Handy Hippo site in various manufacture um, states. This is Cuttlebug. These are embossing folders. They are absolutely gorgeous. They are used with the Cuttlebug, they can be used with the Big Shot, all of which are considered purchases again, but once you've made your choice, it's, you look for versatility, you look for something that will allow all of these folders to go through, and then that way you actually save money. And there are lots on the market at the moment, so I'll leave those there for you to look at. There are these beautiful embossing folders also found on Handy Hippo and it's Anna Griffin and this young lady has come up with a beautiful idea whereby you can actually, if I take it out of the packet, you've got a double, double feature here which is lovely. You've got your main embossing folder. I haven't got anything dark to show you. I don't think it'll show up on the white. Mm. It might show up easier with an envelope in it. And I just would like for you to see the design. I don't know, if, is that any clearer? I'll just ask the phone please say no. Uh, let's see if I can put it on. Didn't want, to put it Didn't want to do this particularly. Is that any better? Okay, so this is Anna Griffiths and what she's done is given you a beautiful embossing folder, Anna Griffin, sorry, and then as an aside so that actually you wouldn't have to do any more than emboss 
your folder in onto your card directly and then this sort of belly band affair which opens up as so you can put across and emboss on a separate piece of card or paper and it fits across the um, main card front so were you to put some little um, embellishments in the center of the flowers for example and perhaps another on the actual belly band part you would end up with a very pretty very acceptable very quick card um, which is phenomenal you know so you, you don't always want to be taking an age to put something together I'll just put that one out of the way a moment so that's Anna Griffin there are several designs by this lady um, they're all beautifully named they are very very versatile in their use there is a rose one there with the design and you've still got the belly band facility at the back um, and they are in my opinion quite a bargain and readily available on Handy Hippo there is also a system here by Susan Tierney Coburn now this is a little double set again which I've not actually opened fully but I'll show you on the back rather than taking it out because I've not really had time to do anything with this to show you how it works but basically you've got two folders one is the wreath one is this little sprig of greenery and then a little bird perch so you could actually conceivably um, emboss them both fussy cut and put across the wreath if you wanted to just as an example or you could use them separately and individually but it really is a gorgeous idea with all of these of course you can ink them on one side you'll find when you open them there's a raised side which is here and then the inverted side which is here if you paint over with a brad or a brush something um, in keeping with the project that you want to make slot your card in and then close it over the painted area actually shows and makes a very nice backing paper it does mean you spend time cleaning up your folders but if you wanted a really really delightful outcome you can do it with ink pads it doesn't have to be paint the downside with the ink pads is that of course they will stain the uh, folders which perhaps isn't such a great idea but you know there are all these wonderful folders out there available readily available I forgot to mention my um, silicon adhesive which also I use very very much again it's a craft creation it's available on handy hippo and I use this for putting on paper flowers or the heavier embellishments as I talked about last time I believe um, no on the glues and adhesive so that's another one to keep in mind Tim Holtz features as do 64 if you include Tim Holtz 65 um, companies are represented by Handy Hippo and this is the Tim Holtz and it's the Tattered Flower which I have talked about before but it should be in the mix because the dyes are excellent they will only be they can only be used on the, the big shot or on the cuttle bug with the appropriate plates it's you need to remember that it won't fit on the grand caliber which i found to my cost but i am naughty and i do have the cuttle bug as well other um, dies are memory box we featured the um, dress form before and Handy Hippo have sent me this beautiful tree, group of trees, which I will go into a bit more detail about later on. So Memory Box is another featured company. I can't extol their virtues enough. They are beautiful, beautiful dyes. The detail on them is tremendous. 
and another one new to me, thanks to Handy Hippo, and I can only sing its praises, is the Wild Rose Studio Speciality Craft Dies. And this is a corner flourish, which I'll show you a little bit more of in a little while. Absolutely superb. Then you come on to the big boys of the die cutting, and these are the spell binders, the embossalicious, the um, all singing, all dancing die sets and embossing folders. At the end of the day, you have to go with what pleases you, with what fits into what you want to do. These are good value. You can't take that away from this company because never would you buy just one single item. If you buy a set, then you buy a set. There are one, two, three, four, five dies in this one, one, two, three, four dies in this one, which is excellent value, whichever way you look at it. It lets itself be layered, it lets itself be standalone um, embellishments on your card. They truly are wonderful, but they are again considered purchases. You can't buy them for under this kind of thing, £15, I would say, and that is a, a, not a defined amount of money. That's a rough, rough guide. You would really need to look around and check prices, but they are available on Handy Hippo. Handy Hippo also add these dies and things periodically into their clearance cells. So, you know, it's good to check the site on a regular basis. That's www.handyhippocrafts and just see what they've added to the clearance pack. It's across all um, the categories on the site. You may even find Martha Stewart featured there one day, who knows. But this is a punch which is another way of embellishing your cards. Now I have several of these um, punches primarily because I used to have a small group of ladies that I used to do a little bit of card making with and I found these and because for the older ladies they are such a joy to use you need to put pressure on them, but it's not immense pleasure if you're of, of a, a, a problem with your hands and so on. They're very clearly marked and defined. They're spring-loaded. I don't know if you can see through here, but they're made to a very, very good standard. They're not the cheapest on the market, but for durability, they are amazing. And what I also have to say about Martha Stewart punches is that they are one of the few punches on the market that actually say you can punch through card. Now I've proven this and I've done it so I know that it's true. I wouldn't try and emboss with any punch at wouldn't try and punch with any punch at the 300 GSM level because I feel that's asking a lot of a small machine but in actuality it is something you can do I just wouldn't recommend that you did it regularly this is very happy with 220 240 it interestingly enough doesn't like paper single sheets of paper very much if I'm going to punch paper, then I tend to put two sheets of paper together. Um, it's cost effective because you actually end up with two of everything that you cut out. But for some reason, whether it's because the mechanism is quite heavy duty, it really does start to object if you just use a single sheet of paper. And I'm not specifically talking about a single punch here or one of the all over the page punches, even the border punches, don't seem to appreciate the thinner materials for punching. 
but all of these things are available on Handy Hippo and I do suggest that you do go along, perhaps make a, an imaginary shopping list, make a wish list on the store. With that then comes recommendations of what other people have purchased alongside a given item and if you're brand new to crafting you might find that helpful in having other products to look at in close proximity. So we'll leave that one there. The other thing that Handy Hippo advocate quite strongly are scoreboards. Now the one I have here is the Crafter's Companion. Now to get a proper shop-like fold in the cards that you make, you really do need something of this nature. I've got two boards here. This is a very old one that I use constantly. Um, these come with a bone folder. They come with instructions, if I take it out, as to how to get the best out of the product. Using the bone folder for the given board is actually quite important because it is designed to just go nicely in the grooves of the board and keep everything in order. With this you can actually slide along as I am here without any duress at all. You would very, very rarely come off the board because the tip of this bone is actually designed for the board. This board gives you crinkle edges. You can try fold your card, which means folding it in, in a kind of um, three-way fold, a half fold on an A5, a square card, a half fold on an A4, you can actually emboss with these rolly bits here which is lovely if you don't have um, a card edge that you know you would like to have scalloped you can just fold this and very carefully fussy cut along. On the back of the board you've got the board base and the as you turn it around the box lid, box base, box lid and you can make a box using one of these very, very easily. It's graded by size. Whichever score line you start with is the one that you follow as you turn your card around. So if you started here and scored down, you would then score again using the same line all the way around four times and then turn it and do the same thing again with another piece of card on the base, chamfer your corners, fold up the creases and in no time at all. I have done a video previously which was nothing to do with Andy Hippo but if you want to go and have a look it does show you how to use these boards quite effectively and they are a boon. They're, they're, um, they do allow you, if I show you the edge of this card, for example, you can see it's a nice rounded edge, similar to those that you buy in the shop. No one has come along and creased it by hand, which gives it a sharp fold. Greeting cards aren't supposed to have that sharpness on the edge. So hopefully that's another thing that you might find you'd like to add to your little stash of things to craft with. The booklet shows you very, very clearly how to make basic folds, gate fold, tri fold, slim line, square, and it goes all the way through to show you concertina, it really is an excellent, excellent buy. It's one of the more affordable boards, we'll say, on the market. There are several available and it really has to come down to personal choice and your finances as to what you choose. 
you know, it, there is very little to, to choose between the scoreboards when you actually get down to using them. Some of them offer extra facilities and by that I'll show you the one that I use and it is one that clicks open, it's got the bone folder stashed here, it's measured in inches because I can't really get my head around the metric side, it's got a cutting edge here, this lifts up, you can put that out and down and this acts as a, as a barrier if you like for your measuring and help slide things along. This is a great board, I'm not going to lie to you, but this is one that I use because I've been crafting for such a long time and I'm actually using it on larger projects. So that is why I would suggest for the longer time um, crafters that you would probably be looking for something a little bit more at the market. On Handy Hippo they've got the um, scoreboards from America, the Martha Stewart scoreboard, all of which are wonderful. Just read all about them before you make your purchases and that's across the board. Um, you, it, it, it pays to take that little bit of time to look into what you're actually buying and what its capabilities are, what its recommendations are, because it's a sad thing when you get home and you've opened something and find it's not quite what you hoped it would be, because once it's opened, it really is sold. The other thing that is a great thing to have in your stash are cello bags. Now these are readily available again on Handy Hippo, several sizes and they're great when, if you're making Christmas cards for example to sell, pop them in one of these little bags with an envelope, it lifts up what you're doing, it makes it look more pre presentable and more professional. These are self-sealing which again is a, a plus. It really does pay to have this kind of thing to hand. At the very least, you can also use these bags for storing your cards. If you're making cards for future birthdays, it keeps them dust free and it keeps them safe. So, you know, it's it's a nice little thing to have in your, in your crafty toolbox, we'll say. Now, just to round up and to reinforce what I've talked about today I have made some cards um, if I just show you this one from the tree and I'm about to show you how very versatile these die cuts are this one is the one from the memory box that I talked to you about all I've done is rolled each of the trees over something round the handle of my brush or a pokey tool or something of that nature that will allow this to be sculpted an altered shape. I have put some double sided foam tape underneath to raise it away from the work. I've used the Martha Stewart um, snowflake punch and doubled it and just put a little bit of bling in the centre. This outside edge is achieved by using a double-sided tape, quite narrow as you can see, and I've just put it all the way around the edges of the card. I've then got my little tidy tray, I've sprinkled it over with glitter as I'm hoping the light will show you, and that makes a very, very pretty, very acceptable Christmas card. It's basic, it's not hard to do. Someone just starting out would be able to do that very, very easily. So that's one using the trees. The other one I did using the trees is um, very different. Just to show you how that... Oh, where did that one go? Ah, oh, here it is. 
Now with this one I've used the same trees, I've used backing paper and mirror board. I've left the trees absolutely flat, I haven't made them 3D at all. I've put a little bit of ribbon around the base, used the snowflake again and this is just card from my stash which has been slightly um, mirrored and slightly um, painted. It's, it's actually a little bit of writing, some very faded out image in the back that really doesn't make any sense at all but to put the trees on it if you see the same same cutout put together in such a different way it shows the versatility of the dyes that I'm promoting today so that's those two with the tree from the memory box we'll just put those there the other one that I wanted to show you is the Wild Rose Studio Speciality Craft die. Now what I've done here is just made a congratulatory card. I've used someone else's die in the centre but I've used this gorgeous corner embellishment as you'll see. Um, I've turned it upside down and kept it the right way because there is only one way you can apply it into a corner. Um, you, you're either doing it uh, landscape, but to do it portrait is actually quite nice. This would make a lovely wedding anniversary silver, a congratulations on your engagement card. It would all come down to the verse that you were using inside. But you can see the detail on the die and what you see on the packaging is what you get, which is absolutely beautiful in my opinion. It's not an expensive die. I love it. I absolutely love it. It was quite a pleasure when I put this through my Grand Calibre to start off with to see that every facet of it cut beautifully. There was no pricking out afterwards to get it out of the die. It was wonderful to use. So that's that one. And then in a more dramatic way, I used the same, the same corner die again. You'll see it. I also used the Tim Holtz flower. I've done it in black and white monochrome. And I've actually used at one throughout, either a very matte card or this black mirror card and that runs through the flower as well so depending on what light you're in you actually see the two types of black card. I put on a verse from a stamp that I've had for a long time and absolutely adore and I've just cut one of the flowers and put it either side of the sentiment but again it just shows you that these things can be altered and utilised in so many wonderful ways. So I hope this has been informative. I hope this episode has been helpful to you. Please go along to the Handy Hippo YouTube channel to find out what the secret word is this week. Good luck to everyone that's taken part. Also remember that if you want newsletters about up and coming sales and events then go along and register with the Handy Hippo Craft site and all of those things will become clear to you via email. If you have any questions for me please feel free. If you would like a tutorial on the cards that I've shown today then please let me know which one you would be interested in and I will happily come back and do that so that you can see how the cards are put together but they are quite basic cards there's nothing too challenging about them hopefully they would be appealing to someone whether they've crafted for years or for five minutes so thank you very much for your time i hope this has been helpful happy crafting till next time everyone Oh, by the way, next time it's going to be embellishments. So 
hopefully that will be a must-see for you. Take care everyone, bye-bye.